Hello, everyone. Welcome to worship. And for those of you who are joining us in our recorded service, welcome to you. It's good to be here with you in this 11th week of Pentecost as we continue to walk together as the body of Christ called together and animated by the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, that is, breath of God, Ruach. So I don't know uh, what brought you here tonight. Hopefully it was in response to an invitation, a prompting that you felt from God. A desire to come together with others to worship God, to be grateful for all that God has placed in our lives. We welcome Karen back to worship with us tonight. And for all who are joining us, perhaps for the first time, life here at St. Paul is nothing like boring. Uh, we have lots going on, and so we enter into this month of August, well, uh, recognizing that uh, we're entering into a time when people are doing a little extra traveling, we're preparing for our program year, and so we continue to pray for each other. We continue to worship in the park on Sunday mornings at 1030 in Wapsiana, and you're welcome to come and join us there. Invite a friend, encourage a neighbor to come and join us as St. Paul Lutheran, worshiping and loving each other. We don't worship each other. We worship God and we love each other. So just want to be clear about that. Let's take a deep breath as we gather tonight and just allow ourselves to land here, to be in this space. invite you to rise as we begin our worship tonight, making the sign of the cross a sign of our baptisms as we say, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. We come together each week and we recognize that God calls us to be Christ's body on earth, to love, to use our mouths and our ears and our eyes, our hands and our feet to bring good news to people. Sometimes we fall short. We become selfish and short-sighted. We become angry. We, we're filled with grief or sadness or we become distracted. It's not who we desire to be. It's not who God desires us to be. So let's take a moment just to reflect on our lives, to recognize those places of sin and separation so that we can lift them up to God for mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. My friends in Christ, we are invited each week to receive at this table the living bread, the body of Christ, so that we might know intensely what it feels like to be loved, to be forgiven, and it is in the name of that same Jesus Christ, that I proclaim your sins are forgiven. You are called to walk in the ways of Christ. Rejoice and be free. Amen. Let us sing together, baptized in water. Yeah. 
desires of salvation, trust in his promise, faithfully now God's praise we sing, baptized in The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Gracious God, your blessed Son came from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the proclamation of the word. Good evening. Our first reading is from the Hebrew first book of Kings, chapter 19. The prophet Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom tree bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. And then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read together Psalm 134, verses 1 through 8. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with us. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. The poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Our second reading is from the letter to the early Christian community in Ephesus, Turkey, chapter 4. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that they may have something to share 
with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly beloved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Word of God, word of life. The Lord be with you. I invite you to rise for the proclamation of the gospel. It comes to us from St. John, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. At this, the Jewish leaders there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Some pretty lofty stuff that John seems to be putting in front of us in this gospel passage tonight. This idea of Jesus, the bread of life, giving his flesh, those who need to eat his flesh in order to have life. It's a it's a kind of a confusing thing. If you put yourself in the midst of those who were hearing him speak, what do you imagine they were thinking? How did they respond to him? Is it, I mean, is he talking about cannibalism? I mean, what this is what people make fun of us about. No, it couldn't possibly be that. Jesus is speaking about something much more profound, much more practical. So I don't know about you guys, but um, I can't help it. When the Olympics are on, everything kind of gets focused through the Olympics for me. Now, I'm not going to go on and on about the Olympics, but I have to say, I've just been amazed again over the past week in particular. I, I missed most of last week because we were on our mission trip down to St. Louis, Skyler and I, along with several others from our church. 
uh, seven youth and Kylene and me. And, and so we weren't able to watch the Olympics, but I've been watching it a lot since I've been home. And I've been just overwhelmed again and again by these, these athletes who have given themselves completely to this, this way of life. And what have we seen them do but amazing feats and breaking records last night again. McLaughlin breaking a world record for the second time this year. And the person who got second also beat the world record. Uh, Del Delilah. I always thought it was Delilah. She pronounces it Delilah. Anyway, these, these sprinters, these amazingly fast people, these athletes that go beyond what they thought they could do, go beyond what people before them thought they could do. They excel because they strive and dedicate themselves over and over and over again. And then on the other side of it has been this story with Simone Biles, you know, the, the greatest of all time. And she recognizes when she is not at her best. She recognizes her, her, her spinnies <laughs> are going to keep her from performing the best, and she takes herself out of the competition. What kind of strength and fortitude for a young woman to have to take herself out of the spotlight, although those of us who watch any kind of news know she was as much in the spotlight as anything. But the narrative changed, didn't it? It became this now this conversation about mental health and about athletes who, who spend all their time in the spotlight, how the pressure builds on them and putting ourselves in their place. Could we do any different, any better? It, I mean, it's truly amazing. I've been overwhelmed by that, that story. And then to see her medal last night. Really... Uh, a positive ending to a story that had so many people critical. I find myself wondering as I watch these athletes, and the thing I love about the Olympics is we get to see sports that we never get to see any other time. You know, ping pong. This, it's amazing how fast those guys hit that ball. Ping pong and wrestling and, um, and canoeing and rowing and judo and taekwondo. All these sports that go on that we never get to see any other time. And it opens me up to this whole other part of the world. It makes me feel connected in a way that I don't a lot of the other time. And I find myself wondering as I'm thinking about those athletes, if they had listened to the small voices of the little people in their lives in their younger years who said that they were incapable of such feats, who maybe told them that their dreams weren't realistic, who, who kind of held great feats as beyond their abilities, would they have become Olympians? if they had listened to those critical voices in their lives. I wonder, because I'm applying these thoughts to Jesus in our gospel tonight, and I'm thinking about Jesus as the human being before he was declared God. See, that didn't happen until the fourth century. Prior to that, Jesus was the anointed one of God who lived out the kingdom that he proclaimed in a powerful way. And he never held the power for himself. But in this story that John tells us, what do we hear? Jesus proclaims, I'm the bread come down from heaven. And I think that's what he really believed about himself, is that because of the power that flowed through him, the healing, the teaching, the way he was able to bring the marginalized and the excluded back into communion, he recognized he was the fulfillment of what God had proclaimed through Moses and all the prophets and the destiny of Israel in him was the fulfillment of of God's promises, and he was feeding people in all sorts of ways. 
Baruch Ata Adonai. Here, share this. And people were fed. People, people, Jesus, he began to believe that he was the bread of life. And when he proclaims that about himself, of course, those religious authorities around him were threatened, weren't they? Because why? People started to follow Jesus. And it also meant in this culture that they lived in of finite resources and finite uh, 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 merits and, and finite blessings. If Jesus was truly becoming the bread of life, that meant that they were going to lose out. They were going to suffer. They were going to lose honor. Their positions of power were being threatened. And so what do they do? Oh, Jesus, we know his mom and dad. We know his family. He comes from that little podunk town of Nazareth up there. He ain't all that. They try to put him down, right? They try to say that what he believes this divine power that is manifesting in him can't possibly be what he is proclaiming it to be. The authorities belittle him. They try to hold him back. They try to keep him trapped in this culture of finite gifts and finite energy and finite resources. But what happens in Jesus saying to them, I know this to be true. And you're, if you come to me, it's because the Father has led you to follow me. And there were people around him who were watching Jesus intently. They saw him time and again. They didn't just take a glance at him. They didn't just dismiss him. They followed him and they watched him and they came to believe in him. Why? Because Jesus was doing exactly the opposite of what the authorities claimed he was doing. That by saying he was something other than what he was. See, he was supposed to just be a carpenter's son. He was supposed to be a simple man and not make any ruffles. But instead of taking power and authority and resources onto himself, what was Jesus constantly doing? Giving it away, wasn't he? Every time he healed somebody, your faith has saved you, your faith in God. Every time he spoke to somebody, the bread of life, the eternal water that you seek, it's right in your midst. It's within you. It's the gift of God. I didn't do anything. I'm just pointing it for you. I'm pointing it out. I'm helping you to realize it. He gave away anything that came to him. Isn't that the activity of a creating God? And in doing that, Jesus manifests the kingdom that he proclaims. And he brings people to God. But it isn't enough to see and to believe that Jesus is the bread of life, is the anointed one of God. No, see, his was a a mission of action. <clears throat> Those who believed in Jesus were called by him out of their ordinariness, out of the shackles of selfishness and sin and pettiness. They were called by Jesus to be healers, to be servants, to be dignifiers of others. Just as Jesus had done with the Samaritan woman. Just as he had done with those many people that were considered filthy or were traded. Those who were considered unworthy or lacked attention. 
just like Jesus would ultimately give his life on the cross for the sake of the world, he invited all to take a bite out of his flesh. Meaning, you got to be fully human if you're going to live in this kingdom I proclaim. That means, not only do you get to celebrate the joys of God, but also join me in my suffering. That's what it means to chew on the flesh of the Christ. To participate fully in the life he experienced on earth. The highs and the lows, the encounters and the abandonments. That's the life that we're called into. This is me and this is you. Called into the life and the action of Christ. It's a privilege that we have and it's a yes that we can give if we are listening and paying attention to the God who draws us to Jesus, and if we're listening to the Christ who draws us to God, the one who is the source of our life, eternal. And I love the way Jesus says that. As soon as I find it, I'll tell you. <laughs> Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. This isn't something we strive for. This isn't something we experience after we die. We live eternal life now when we believe in the bread of life, when we believe in the one who is with us always. So what does, what does it look like to be a people of action living as Christ's body in the world today? The author of this letter to the Ephesians was trying to answer that very question for people who were Gentiles, people who were previously considered outside the grace and mercy of God, now brought fully into relationship with God through baptism in the crucified and resurrected one. The author says, this is what your lives are to look like. Put away falsehood. Speak the truth in love to your neighbors. Be angry, but don't let it drive you to sin. Don't go to bed angry. Have you ever heard that before? It doesn't, it's not just about your spouse. Let go of the anger that leads to ill speech of others, that leads to wishing harm or violence upon others. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. In other words, reconcile. Speak to the one who has harmed you and find a common ground. Thieves, stop stealing. Do some honest work with your hands. So you have something to offer those who are in need. See, there's an aspect of generosity that must flow through our community. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths. What would it be like if we eliminated evil talk? Put-downs, gossip, Racist remarks, racist jokes. What would it be like if we eliminated that from our lives? Would that raise others up to know the grace of the God that you claim to be filled with? Holy Spirit has marked us and claimed us for salvation. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit by acting in ways that tear other people down. Put away bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and violence and fighting and slander and malice. Put them away and be kind to one another. 
tenderhearted. Forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. If you haven't yet fully received the forgiveness of God that comes to you in Christ, do it now. Do it today. Maybe we should have an altar call. Come on up if you've been forgiven by Christ. Those of us who participate in communion today are proclaiming our forgiveness by being united as one people in God. Let our communion today be the proclamation of our forgiveness and our dedication to forgive others in just the same way. Be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us first and gave himself up to us for the sake of the world, sacrificing all that he was and all that he had for his God and for the life of the world. Take a nice big bite out of the flesh of our God today and know that you are filled with the energy, the passion, the grace to live beyond what people have told you you can live, to live beyond brokenness and hurt and sin, to live beyond what you think you have been called to, to be, in fact, Christ in the world for another person. Maybe that way we can get gold, but not at the expense of anyone else. Having been formed in the Word of God, we now join our voices and our hearts in confessing our common faith in the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We take time now to lift our prayers up to God along with the prayers of the church. I invite you to reflect on your own lives and to call to heart and mind those people and situations you would like to join to the prayers of the church at this time. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice, for correction officers and prison chaplains, that they may deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles and refugees and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future. For all who mourn the death of a loved one, especially the family of Ed Oltmans. For all who are sick, especially Lucas Stout, Angie Keller, Harry Schmidt, and Etta Lair. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebration. For those who bring the food from the ta this table to those who are homebound and hospitalized. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With Dominic, the founder of the Order of Preachers, the Dominicans, and all those we name silently in our hearts. And all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keep us in your love forever. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with Take some time to share with those around you a sign of Christ's peace. It is with your generosity of time and treasure and talent that we are able to continue our ministry and our vision here at St. Paul. We do so for the sake of Anamosa and for the wider church, for the wider community. And so it is with uh, gratitude that we pray in thanksgiving to God who provides all for us 
so that we can return some of it to be blessed and broken and shared out for the sake of others. Let us join our voices in praying together with thanksgiving. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. By his birth, we are reborn. In his suffering, we are freed from sin. By his rising from the dead, we rise to everlasting life. In his return to you in glory, we enter into your heavenly kingdom. And so we join the angels and saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise. In the power of Holy Spirit, we now recall with great thanksgiving the memorial Christ left for us as we remember that on the night he was betrayed, the night before he died, he was at supper with his apostles and his disciples. And during the meal, he took bread into his hands. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the meal had ended, he took a cup filled with wine. Looking up, he gave thanks to his heavenly Father, and he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of Christ, his giving of himself fully for the life of the world that we dare to join our voices in praying the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the risen Christ invites us to this table where the many become one. Come eat the bread of life and be united in love.
Lord be with you. I invite you to rise and let us pray together. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, so strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and give you peace. Amen. Let us sing together, Savior, again.
as we prepare to go out into the world, nourished by the bread of life, we say together, through the power of Holy Spirit, we go into the world to creatively connect, intentionally grow, and joyfully serve. Thanks be to God and all God's people say, Amen. Have a super week.